sorry. So I received loads this letter. I guess I'm the only one in this room um, uh, for my app called White Noise. And it uh, basically I have a page, which probably everyone here has in their own apps, which links to the App Store. Loadsys came out with, um, they're, they're claiming in-app purchase uh, is not being provided to third-party developers, and that's the whole dispute, and that's why Apple's trying to get involved. In my case, it seems like they're expanding uh, their claims a bit, because I'm not using in-app purchase, um, I'm just linking to the App Store, so I have an app that links to another app. Uh, in the app store, that's all. So uh, that's my particular case. I received the letter, I think, 30 days ago, and they give 21 days to respond. Is that to, to buy the pro version of your... No, it's not even an upgrade. So it initially, Lotus was sending letters to people who did in-app purchase. Then they did a round of letters to people who had light versions that were to full versions. And of course, I have those too. I have light versions that point to full versions. So they're claiming their, their patents you know, are, cover that as well. And then in my case, it was a paid app, White Noise, and I had other paid apps that were available. Uh, white Noise Baby was the example they kind of showed clicking from White Noise to White Noise Baby in the App Store. And so they, they really are kind of, it seems like expanding their, what their claims mean. Um, so if you just go to the App Store, uh, I think they think their patent covers that concept. Yeah, I think they're they're pretty much focused on mobile devices. What if it's okay. a web app? Yeah. Can I make a point? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to make a point. Um, from a developer's perspective, it doesn't really matter what you do. I'm certain the, the attorney would disagree to some degree, but once you get one of these letters, you're committed to spending real money, even if the claim is complete nonsense. And I think every developer in this room can agree that submitting forms to a website or having a link or a buy now button in your app is complete nonsense. This should never have been patented in the first place. But once they have the piece of paper that gives them monopoly power over that concept, and as we were saying, the costs are so prohibitive to defend yourself, whether you have a link in your, in your app to the store, or it's a link like we have in our app to the market app. Lotsis is asserting that against some people, not against us yet. Um, it's, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, in the Lotsis case, you look at the, the patent, it goes back to, I think, the 70s, and it's really about fax machines and getting user feedback about services that a fax machine had. So how they map that to in-app purchase is something that only, I think, Mark Small, the CEO of Lotsis, knows, because Apple doesn't agree, and I don't think any of the other developers that have received this letter, um, there's just no way, it just doesn't make sense. So. Yeah. What, is, what has Apple done in response to this? Uh, I just want to make sure that we repeat the questions. I yeah. just, uh, so what has ha Apple done? Um, more than Google, because this affects Android users as well. They're getting letters. Um, but Apple, so the seven original iOS developers have been sued. And part of that was Twitterific Icon Factory, which is the app I know. Um, but. So Apple's like trying to get involved, uh, whatever that word is. They're trying to, they filed an injunction. And so there were, it seems like you know, everyone's just waiting around to see what will happen in, in that particular case. As far as Google developers, you know, unfortunately, you know, Google hasn't really said anything. So it, it's unclear, uh, unfortunately, that you know, in my case, I would just love if Apple would came out and said, you know, don't worry, guys, we'll, we got your back. But they haven't done that yet. But they are trying to get involved in, in the actual lawsuit with the seven developers. My understanding is that Apple already has a license to the Lotsis patents. And they're trying to say that our license to the Lotsis patents passes on to our development community. So, um, yeah, through the sub licenses, so that the issue is 
you can't get two bites at the same apple. It's not fair. If you we license it, we pat, we're able to pass that down through our OS. These guys are using our OS. Um, it, it shouldn't be a problem. Lotus clearly doesn't agree with that assessment, but I think that's why. That's my understanding. And again, not involved in legal issues with that, but that's my understanding is that Apple stepping in to say to provide that defense. Okay, coming from the perspective of the small guy who's either making almost nothing, or little money, or doing a free app and still getting this kind of situation, um, is an LLC behind that app enough protection? And is there like one state better than another to LLC in? And, and what if you just want to ignore this whole thing and shut it down and say, here, take my app, I don't care, I don't make any money at it. Uh, does that work? Or, or if you ignore the whole thing and don't do anything, what's the worst case scenario? I'll leave up for someone who doesn't have the money to fight it, doesn't want to fight it, doesn't yeah. really, is not that invested in that particular app or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, you basically have the attitude, sue me, right? Yeah. See what you get. I mean, for some, for some companies, that, that might be the answer. So the LLC should provide you some uh, protection against your personal assets, right? That's what the LLC is meant to, to do. You, you have to follow the rules um, of, of an LLC and, and do the, the things that good businesses do, keep separate check accounts, don't commingle funds, all the rest of those sorts of things, um, so that for whatever reason, they can't say that you, the person, are the same as you, the LLC, that provides you some shield. So you're going to only be exposed to the extent of the assets um, of the LLC and not your house, provided the house is in the LLC or, or your retirement or, or those sorts of things. Um, you know, check with a corporate lawyer to, to really ascertain that issue. So that, that's one thing. Um, right. and I would add that um, Rick is 100% right that you really need to be performing each of the requirements of your state's procedures for becoming an LLC or a corporation. If you're, what Rick is um, mentioning about commingling of the funds, if you're simply paying some of your bills out directly out of that corporate bank account, uh, there's a really substantial argument to be made that you're uh, using the LLC to avoid, improperly avoid uh, liability and, and you're going to lose that protection. But even if you're not spending money or if your infringement damages are minor, what is the cost of your time? Many of you are um, run a small shop to lose your own management time, to put together the story of your own development, your own product, going back and doing your documentation, can be enough that even if you don't end up paying a lot of money in settlement or in damages, that you've um, damaged the reputation of your company because you don't have time to complete contracted work. Uh, and there's other, other issues that way. So. You need to take, I think that Z was talking about it in the beginning, this, you know, this practical approach of how do I get back to business. And if you, uh, one of the ways that you can reduce attorney's fees uh, is to really do your homework. And doing your homework is laying out how did I come up with my product, what did I look at. It pulls together the story that, that David mentioned in terms of prior art. And I, I think that many of you, on a practical level, uh, could really help to start build these defenses uh, and, and mount a stronger position than you think that you're in. So, so just to finalize that, to get an answer on the uh, question of if I just shut it down, if I just say I'm willing I don't want to put in my time to do all this. I don't want to defend it. I'm just going to shut the whole LLC down, whatever, take the app out of the app store or whatever it takes. Um, is that enough? If, is you've that made, if you've made millions of dollars, they're going to go after the prior damages. But if you've made zero, and Rick, you know, I think you, you would agree. I've had some clients who in this situation, and especially in the first dot-com bubble, if there's very little money, the, the plaintiffs, when they shotgun approach, like Rick was talking about, you know, when they find out that there's no nothing there, they don't want to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars to try and collect ten dollars. 
you know, if there's ten dollars in damages, they're not going to. They're not stupid here. They're in the business of doing this. So, you know, if there's nothing to be had, they generally will offer you a cheap license or maybe, you know, drop you all together. Right? Yeah, I mean, at, at some point, it's not worth trying to collect. They get a judgment, a thousand dollars. They, you know, you show here. I, I've made ten thousand dollars on this total. You know, come chase me for a thousand dollars. That means it's it's probably not worth their time to do that. Well, if they don't do that, does that violate the law of the patent? That if if they just let you go and don't make you sign and give you like either give you a free license. Is that like saying, okay, they're not defending their patents, so you no. can then use that as a prior, no. as a, an argument to different take from trademark law? Right? Yeah, it's, it's different. So, so here, I, I, I want to ask if Jonathan wants to comment on this. Jonathan, the, the question is, um, can I be too small or can I be too small to worth the time? Feel free to comment or not. Um, <clears throat> hi, this is Jonathan uh, with Widget Press. I, mean, I, I understand the, the question um, because I can relate because I am a, a one-person uh, development shop. Um, and with, with our case, with Macrosol, um, we, we, I can't talk in detail of how I, I got out of the case, um, but on the same thread that, um, that ugh, how do I say this? Um, we were able to position ourselves, and, and we did this with our attorney, to make it not worthwhile for them to come after us. Um, there were some revenue there that, that was of interest to them, um, but in, in, in the long, from their point of view, um, it wasn't worth for them to come after a, a one-person shop. So um, I can't remember who, who said that uh, earlier that it's probably not worthwhile, but um, I kind of agree with that. However, some patent trolls do believe that, that accumulating as many signees of, of patents puts a little bit more sale or puts a little bit more wind in their sails to go after larger corporations. So the more licensees that patent or sign up for these patent licenses, um, it gives them a little bit more leverage down the line. Um, for us, we were able to get out pretty early. Uh, we were sued in April, and we were released uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan, are, are you Jonathan? Are you allowed to yeah. say whether you have to stop selling that particular app or or stop providing that application? Um, no, we're, we are we are shipping the app. Um, we were released um, under they call it without prejudice, which basically means that they can come after us again. Um, so it's as if we've never been sued before. So to this right now we're 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 not in the lawsuit, um, but they do reserve the right to to come after us in with the lawsuit with the same claims. So, so let's go with you, and then I know this gentleman, two gentlemen over here have had their hands up for a long time. Okay. I'm wondering if the strategy here isn't so much making money, but to build a body of uh, prior uh, judgment and uh, precedent. Uh, they're going after the low-hanging fruit first, and then once they've got all these lawsuits won, they'll go after the bigger fish. I mean, clearly that's part of the strategy. They're trying to get some amount of money to fund the war chest so they're not out of pocket. Right, they've got. They, there are hard costs, checks that need to be written in these cases, even cases on contingency. So they they, they want to have some amount of a war chest um, to pay their experts, to pay for travel, for to pay for different things that that come up, expenses that come up. So clearly, that's that's part of their strategy. Um, there's also a notion of what is a reasonable royalty in the event that they actually win. So a reasonable royalty is determined by what other people in the market may have been paid or may be willing to pay for that particular license. So they can aggregate all of these uh, licenses and say, look, here's, here's a group of people that each signed up, you know, 10% royalty on, the, on their products. This should be the reasonable royalty when we go and sue the bigger companies.